Χαίρετε! In this video, I'm going to be presenting you the various ways that Emacs can interact with Salt tools. And actually, one of the best ways to see Emacs also is like a really extensible terminal emulator that provides a seamless integration between its editing capabilities and Salt utilities. Let's see actually that in action to showcase it with a couple of examples. Now, as most of you are already familiar with cell command, that allows you to run cell command synchronously with Emacs, and a sync cell command that runs cell command asynchronously from Emacs. Now, the best way to demonstrate how the end capabilities of Emacs can really utilize cell commands is the function cell command on region. This runs cell command for that specific region. I have here a list of names, maybe I grabbed out of a file, maybe they are my classmates, whatever. I want to sort it out and keep only the unique ones. I can run cell command on region, sort and unique. It will output a new buffer with the contents of that buffer, sort out and all the unique ones. But that's not really what we want in this case. We want to change that region to have that buffer without us copy and pasting. For this, you just run cell command region with a prefix. Control U, cell command region, the same as before and we'll change that specific region into the output buffer that we saw before without us doing almost anything. And this is really powerful because it can be utilized within keyboard macros or even your own functions. What I mean by that, just run control X, escape, escape. It will show you the command that we just run and you can add it in your own interactive functions that you use commonly when editing. Now, as I said previously, you can view Emacs as a really extensible term terminal emulator. One of the commands that demonstrate this is cell, which allows you to run a subcell within Emacs as an Emacs buffer. This is extremely nice. To call cell, I'm using, I'm using this command that you can see here. You can find the description of this video in the notes. It allows me to call cell with a prefix argument to create a new buffer for each time I call it. Let's say the first one, I run something like echo hello. And let's create a new one. This is cell number two. And I can switch between them almost seamlessly. And because it's an Emacs buffer, I can still use my Emacs skin bindings to select something and paste it as before. This is really nice. Now something even nicer, e cell. A cell written entirely in Emacs Lisp. I have mine heavily configured, which again, you can find the configuration in the description. Let's just visit the buffer. As you can see here, it's a general Excel buffer, which I also have the configurations, the, uh, the configuration of my Emacs that works here, example, my completions or anything else like that, my dot files, for example. I can visit this, I can run the commands that, um, that most of you are already familiar, my addresses that you have already set in eLisp. And when I open a file, you can see that it also follows me around, same as previously with Shell. But since it's written entirely in Emacs Lisp, I can also call Emacs Lisp functions. Let's say to add uh, to do mathematics, as you can see here, we're doing master level mathematics. Whatever you want. And you can also use Emacs Lisp programs from here. Let's say a program that I also have, YouTube search, to search for something in YouTube. Let's say uh, anything that has to do with Emacs. It will pop out a new buffer and will show me the Emacs videos that has to do with Emacs. Anyways, or even a www if you need to, re to read some kind of documentation. What in this case, let's just read the Stodman website for an example site. So that's it with this. So it's probably one of my favorite programs to use, especially when compiled with it. It's a program that you can download, it's available on the GNU repositories. Which, uh, when using the ET cell mod, again the configuration in my description, it allows you to run two e programs using e cell. For example, htop. As you can see here, it works perfectly fine. Or even to sh on a machine, let's say on this machine that I have already configured here. I have sh here and I'm via e cell. This is amazing. I can exit and go back to my e cell. This is something that I really like. I can open VI. Now, as I mentioned previously, to get the most out of eCell, I believe you should use it with it. To be honest, I don't really use it as a standalone terminal emulator, although you can do that. I prefer to use it in combination with eCell. But since I mentioned it, one thing to note is that it also changes the keyboard bindings when you're using to the it mode. Let's say, as I said before previously, 
when I SSH here you can see that my previous key bindings do not work, the control P, control N, the usual Emacs key bindings. You can enter into Emacs mode by pressing control C, control E, and now you can navigate around as previously, you can select copy, uh, copy stuff, and you can enter back into character mode, same character mode I think it's called, by pressing control C, control J, and now you're back into the command line when you can enter commands. This is something to note. Previously with eSelf everything works as expected as previously with self. You can enter commands anything else that you like almost seamlessly. Now this video will not be complete uh, without mentioning term and unstar. They are basically the same thing except that unstar term always creates a new buffer and has control X marked as an escape character. They run a substyle with input and output through an Emacs buffer similar to Sol but with much better support for TUI programs that you can run. Let's see it in action. Let's create an unstern buffer. As you can see, it can run programs like VI without any issue or age stop. They work properly. But it also follows you around wherever you go. Let's say slash dot files. You can just open them or whatever else that you want to do. And one thing that you should also know is that it, the common navigation that you have with Emacs control P to go up, etc., they do not work because you're in term character mode. To go into term line mode, which allows you to navigate through through this buffer like it's a common Emacs buffer, just press Ctrl C, Ctrl J, and I can use my common Emacs commands that I want. And to go back into writing a command, term character mode, Ctrl C, Ctrl J, and you're back here ready to type the next command that you want. It should also be noted that depending on how you have launched Emacs, control the binds that you have on control X have been switched into the control C. For example, to switch buffer using control X B, you would use control C B instead. Now, one of the main things that I want to demonstrate here is how Emacs can basically be your main terminal emulator because if you're familiar with Emacs, having basically your cell process being treated as a Emacs buffer is a really killer feature, not to mention its integration that setting capabilities heavy with the cell utilities, as I already showed. Now, I personally do not use a term emulator unless I have to SSH into a machine and launch Emacs from there. But this happens in really rare occasions where I can't use Trump mode in Emacs, which I guess basically needs another video on its own, but that's for another time. Until then, have a nice day and Kali Sinesia.